our same topic that is verbs. Already we have learned about modal verbs. Then we have learned about finite and non-finite verbs. Also we have learned different non-finite verbs. Today we learn about transitive and intransitive verb. So before explaining the concept of transitive and intransitive, let us see two examples. Dinesh plays cricket. He plays energetically. Now in these two sentences, which are the verbs? Plays. Right? But in first sentence, Dinesh plays cricket, the verb is transitive. And in second sentence, the verb plays is intransitive. Let us see two more examples. Students are reading. Which is the verb? Reading. Students are reading a lesson. Here also the verb is reading. So in the third sentence, the verb reading is intransitive. And in the fourth sentence, the verb reading is transitive. Can you tell me why is it so? Yes. Because in this sentence, there is an object. Dinesh plays cricket. So what he plays? Cricket. It is an object. Now already we have learned what is subject and what is object. Subject is the doer of the action and object is the receiver of the action. But see the sentence, he plays energetically. So do you get the answer? What is energetically an object? Does energetically receive any action? No. So here the verb place is intransitive verb. Similarly, students are reading. Students are reading. Okay, so who is doing the action? Students. But action, the reading action is done on what? We don't know. Hence, the verb reading in this sentence is intransitive verb. Students are reading a lesson. So now reading action is done on what? On lesson and hence the verb reading is transitive. So let us see the definition of transitive verb. A transitive verb is a verb which requires an object to receive an action. Okay. So the verb which requires an object to receive an action is called as transitive verb. So if there is a receiver of the action, then that verb is said to be transitive verb. Let us see some examples. Please pass. Now if I say please pass, is the sense clear to you? No, the sense is not clear. So we need an object to clear the sense. So please pass the salt. Please pass the salt. Now here you have an object. So the verb pass is transitive verb. See the second example. She writes. She writes what? There is no object. Nobody or nothing receives the action of writing. But if I say she writes a letter. Now there is a receiver of the action. The action of writing is done on what? On the letter. Hence the verb writes is transitive verb. Next, mother wait. What? Is there any risk 
so baking action done on anything here? No. But if I say mother baked a cake. Mother baked a cake. So baking action is done on what? Who receives the action of baking? Cake. Hence it is the verb baked is transitive verb. So what is a transitive verb? A verb which requires an object to receive the action. So if there is the receiver of the action then that verb is said to be transitive verb. Okay? Hello my dear students. We will continue with our same topic that is verbs. Already we have learned about modal verbs. Then we have learned about finite and non-finite verbs. Also we have learned different non-finite verbs. Today we will learn about transitive and intransitive verb. So before explaining the concept of transitive and intransitive, let us see two examples. Dinesh plays cricket. He plays energetically. Now in these two sentences, which are the verbs? Plays. Is trans 
positive verb. See the second example. She writes. She writes what? There is no object. Nobody or nothing receives the action of writing. But if I say she writes a letter. Now there is a receiver of the action. The action of writing is done on what? On a letter. Hence the verb writes is transitive verb. Next, mother wait. What? Is there any risk of baking action done on anything here? No. But if I say mother baked a cake. Mother baked a cake. So baking action is done on what? Who receives the action of baking? Cake. Hence it is the verb baked is transitive. So what is a transitive verb? A verb which requires an object to receive the action. So if there is the receiver of the action, then that verb is said to be transitive verb. In many sentences, there are more than two objects. So now, how to identify whether the sentence has an object or not. Okay. So, and how to find out what kind of object is it? So, you need to ask the question to the verb what and whom. When you ask the question what and whom to the verb, you get your object. So, let us see with the help of examples, Ram is eating an apple. So Ram is eating what? An apple. So the question I have asked is what? Ram is eating what? An apple. Mother is scolding Tanya. Mother is scolding whom? Tanya. So Tanya is also your object. I read a book. What do I read? A book. So a book is your object. And I want the answer to what? I asked Harry to come. Whom I asked? Harry. So Harry is your object. He has done his homework. What has he done? Homework. Here I have got the answer to what. So depending on the question to which I get the answer, whether it is what or whom, the objects are also dependent. So, there are two kinds of objects. One is direct object and the other is indirect object. There are two types of objects. Direct object and indirect object. So, when I get the answer to what? Then it is direct object. And when I get the answer to whom, it is indirect object. So now here I have got the answer to what? It means it is direct object. Here Tanya is indirect object. A book is direct object, Harry is indirect object, homework is direct object. So when we get the answer to what, then it is direct object. And when we get the answer to whom, it is indirect object. So how will you define 
direct and indirect object. So let's see the definition. An object which answers the question what is called direct object. Then what is indirect object? An object which answers the question who is called an indirect object. So when you want to find whether there is an object or not, you need to ask two questions to the verb what and whom. So what that is direct object, whom is indirect object. Have you understood what is direct object and what is indirect object? Okay. Now let us see. The examples in which there are both the objects that is direct object as well as indirect object. So in the example, she taught me English. So to find the object, which questions we need to ask? What and who? So she taught me what English is your direct object. She taught whom? Me. Me is your indirect object. See the next example. Ram gave me a pen. What did Ram give me? A pen. I got the answer to what? It means it is direct object. Whom he gave? A pen, me. So, me is your indirect object. In most of the sentences, when there are two objects, indirect object comes first. Okay. But sometimes, if the direct object comes first, then we need to add two or for before indirect object. For example, she taught English to me. She taught what English? So English is your direct object. Whom? Me. Me is indirect object and we have used the word to before it because we have used direct object first. See one more example. Ram gave me a pen. So you can also write Ram gave a pen to me. So a pen is your direct object and me is your indirect object but before that I have added two. So whenever you use direct object first we need to add two or four before indirect object. Okay. Now there are certain words which are purely transitive verbs. Now transitive means the verbs which transit. Transit means transfer. So when the verbs transfer to an object, they are called as transitive verbs. Means they require an object to complete its sense. So the words which are purely transitive verbs are take, hit, climb, bring, carry, give, make, etc. So these are purely transitive verbs. Whenever we use these verbs, it requires an object to complete its sense. Without object, these verbs cannot complete the sense. I hope you have understood what is transitive verb. So now let us move towards intransitive verb. You have already learned what is transitive verb. Transitive verb is the verb which requires an object. 
exactly the opposite is intransitive so a verb which does not require an object after it to complete its sense is called intransitive verb so intransitive verb does not require in any object without object the meaning is clear okay so in a sentence if the meaning is clear without an object then that verb is said to be intransitive verb let us see the examples the students are playing so is there any object here students are playing what don't know but the meaning is clear yes it makes a complete sense so this verb is intransitive verb see the second example please come please come what please come home we don't get the answer right so there is no object after the verb hence the verb come is intransitive because the meaning is clear next i go to school i go what or i go home i go to school here to school is not an object it is a complement it is not an object hence the verb go is intransitive verb next example jack runs fast which is the verb in this sentence runs jack runs what don't know jack runs home we don't get the answer so here this is also intransitive verb now your fast is i verb not an object so the verb runs doesn't have any object after it hence it is intransitive verb next example the girls were weeping now which is the verb weeping is there any object after it no so it is also intransitive verb now as we have discussed that there are certain words which are purely transitive similarly there are certain verbs which are purely intransitive so let us see which are the verbs which are purely intransitive verbs means they do not require an object after it to complete its sense for example sit stand come go live die laugh cry run sleep etc so these are the verbs which are purely intransitive verbs they do not require an object after it so similarly there are certain verbs which can be used transitively or intransitively depending upon the situation i hope your concept of transitive verb and intransitive verb is clear thank you